Good evening. Welcome to the May 14, 2019 meeting of the Titusville City Council at 6.30 p.m. I'll, uh, we have a quorum. I'll call this meeting to order. This evening we have uh, Pastor Steve Uke of Park Avenue Baptist Church who is here to say the invocation for us. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Good counselors. Evening. Good evening. Many blessings to all of you. I want to point out a couple things before I pray. Number one, I see you on the seal of the city. It was founded in 1867, being a Canadian. That was the same year that Canada was founded. Some great things happened then. It, it, good things happened that year. I also want to add, I've heard continuously that the town needs a Chick-fil-A. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. I just want to throw first in there. First time I've heard that. I, I just want to throw in there that perhaps we go with the Tim Hortons first, and that will boost the tourism. Uh, from several provinces up in Canada, and I would be fully in favor of that. And does the city manager ever not wear a tie? Never seen him without a tie. Even wearing one to church, how about that? Yeah. So greetings to everybody here tonight. Let's pray, if we could. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We are grateful tonight for every provision you have given us, most of all for yourself, how you've guided us. We ask tonight, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would be in this meeting, that you would guide the decisions of the leadership of this town and this city. I pray, Lord, for each member, for all those who are citizens who are here, that your hand would be upon them, that your blessing would be with them. I pray that you give them insight for growth, to protect, to serve. I ask, Lord, for your strength in mind and in spirit. May there be as much unity as possible. We pray, Lord, that you would Establish things that are righteous before you. So we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your peace. May it fill this room in this place. And over each one tonight, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the countenance and the light of his face shine upon each of you. And may joy fill your hearts as you serve in this manner at this time and in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, first item of business is the approval of minutes, and I will remind whoever makes the motion, please include the dates for the record. Move to approve the minutes of the regular city council meetings on April 9, 2019, and April 23rd, 2019. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or corrections? All those in favor say yes. Yes. And the opposed like sign passes unanimously. We have no special recognitions or Presentations, number six, boards and commissions. Yes, sir. Before our first agenda item, uh, staff would like to withdraw uh, item 9D, which dealt with the uh, 2040 uh, comprehensive plan amendments, um, to allow more time to brief both um, council to answer qu any questions council may have, as well as the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. Uh, do we have any objections to that? No. Can we do that by consensus, or do we need a vote? Thank you. Sir, please vote. Okay. I'd move to uh, table item. No, ma'am, we're, we're going to withdraw this. Withdraw it? Yep. We'll, we'll re-advertise when we're ready to come back to council. 9D. 9D. So withdraw 9D. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say yes. Yes. Any opposed? Like sign. Passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, now back to item six, boards and commissions. Currently, there is one vacancy for a regular member with a term to expire on October 31, 2019, and two vacancies for an alternate members with terms to expire October 31st, 2020. There's currently one application on file for your consideration. Mr. Larry Edwards has expressed his willingness uh, and desire to serve on the Municipal Code Enforcement Board. Much pleasure. Um, I have met Mr. Edwards, and he is very excited about the opportunity to serve on a board. He has never done anything like this before, 
At this point, I would ask that we consider uh, appointing him as an alternate member. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? The, um, is an alternate member? Mm -hmm. that's regular member. Regular member. Can we, well, we're also missing, um, I thought we were missing two alternate, alternate members. I'm not sure if that's the one you're thinking. Okay. Thinking then I would move to appoint him as a member. Okay. Now I have a motion to appoint as a member. Do I have a second? I have a motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say yes. Yes. Any opposed like sign passes unanimously. Next item, North Brevard. Uh, library District Board. Yes, sir. Accept the North Brevard Library District Board's semi-annual report as written. The motion to that. Yes, sir. I move that we approve the uh, accept the North Brevard Library District Board's semi-annual report as written. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Passes unanimously. Next item. North, North Brevard Library District Board. Currently, there is one vacancy on the North Brevard Library District Board with an unexpired term to expire on 30 September 2019. There are currently two applications on file for your consideration, Ms. Jan Corbin and Mr. James Green, who both have expressed their willingness and desire to serve on this board. Their applications are part of your packet. Well, it's council's pleasure. Yes, ma'am. Mayor, if either of the applicants are present, I would like to hear from them. They both seem to be very well qualified. Um, it's very hard to choose between the two. Uh, I don't know if either of them are present, but if they are, I'd love to have, have them come forward. Is either applicant here? I think not, but maybe well, that help. Member Diesel has no. something to add. No, the only thing I was going to add simply because that's exactly how I felt when I read the two applications and I normally, if I don't know them, I rely on somebody up here that might know them and if we don't have that, and I don't really know where to go with it because they're both very good candidates. Nobody knows them? Mm -mm. No. Unfortunately not, but I would suggest that uh, I, I agree with you, they're equally uh, mm -hmm. qualified. Um, I. Could we ask them maybe to come table it and ask them to come next time? I guess we could do that. They, they are invited to come to the meeting. <laughs> oh, they were. Oops. They were invited to come to the meeting. They were that already. That help. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it worse. Eh? <laughs> could we, like, maybe invite them in a little bit stronger language? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and let them know that we're really trying to... Uh, to see their faces and, and talk to them in order to help us make that decision. Uh, I, I don't see, even though they were invited, if we uh, tell them uh, what transpired, perhaps one or both of them would come in, and then we're really going to be confused. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, we can do that if you'd like, I, I feel. Is, is there any problem with that, uh, City no. Attorney? No, council can certainly table and, and take it up at a future meeting if you'd like. Whatever it's then I would ask that we table it until the next meeting and that we issue a uh, request. A request, <laughs> a strong request to mm. have them come before us next time so that we mm. might have a little bit more information and maybe you can make a decision. Mm. I have a motion. Uh, I have a second. Hmm? That was a long much. Not really. <laughs> They'll shorten it up. Don't worry. I'll second it for discussion. Second for discussion? Yeah. Go, I, right, I, go right ahead. I, I, I'm feeling a little um, uneasy about that because if you invite them and that's all you can do, and as the city manager said, they were already invited, neither one of them came. So what happens next time if one of them come? So the other one is disqualified just because maybe they had to go out of town at the next meeting, and I don't think that's fair. I would say they could make that known, and then we could uh, but, take, take that there. But if one of them shows up, that shows right. that more interest than the other, unless, they, unless someone has a, a legitimate issue, and we can deal with that. Mm. I mean, 
I'm, I'm, more, have I'm more afraid if they both show up in the both. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, they could have a legitimate reason they had to go out of town for some well, reason. Absolutely. Right. So we could table it again. Now, there nah. are, in their application are their phone numbers, and council could certainly call them to get a feel for their qualifications that's beyond the actual application itself. That's an, that's an option, too. Well, that, that option is there in, in any case. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have to be part of the motion or anything. You just have to table it. Well, we could. Excuse me. We could still, I would still want to table it and, and, and invite them to be present, sort of let them know that this is <laughs> something we really would like to see them uh, here for. But we, I agree, we can also call them. Make your motion. That's my motion. So well, uh, leaving yeah, off the call part. Yeah, leaving off the call part. Okay. That's the motion now, right? Who did? You did? I did too. Go, yeah. go ahead. Uh, my, I guess my question is, how are they notified? Are, do we email them? Do we call them a week out? And do we tell them that there's multiple applications? Uh, what does that process look like? Uh, Council Member Stockel, that's the city clerk's office. And uh, we, our staff notifies them of the date in which council will consider the applications. And I believe we inform them and invite them to come okay. um, as we talk with them. So as they turn in their application, then that's when they are notified of when the yes ma'am it's never um, been a mandatory it hasn't been right. impressed upon a mandatory um, and that's how okay so they probably don't know that there's multiple applications because it's just probably discussed thank you for your application this will be discussed so it goes back to how we typically will have just one applicant in the past now we're getting multiple us being a little bit maybe more <coughs> proactive letting them know because probably in the past it was just one and they were okay vote make a motion second approve and now that we're getting multiple people and my fear is that they're not knowing you know hey there's multiple applications and i, I don't know because I, I honestly haven't spoken with either of them either so yeah i don't i, I just feel <laughs> I like the process a, is going i think you make a good point and i'm sure uh yeah. staff will take that into account okay Member Diesel, uh, Vice Mayor Diesel. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, playing off of uh, Member Stokel's uh, comments, I'd like to make it, uh, we, I don't think this will make anything required, but I'd like to make it uh, required that if they're nominated uh, or they're are up for this, I'd like to, whoever it is, if it's one, yeah. whoever it is, because too many times we're voting on a board member that we have never met. And like I said, my first plan of attack here after analyzing both applications was I don't know them. These I wrote it down, they're both excellent. You like to think somebody knows them, but that's really not a good way to do it either. So I would like to at least have them here. And if it is just one, it'd be a great chance to meet them and them have their two minutes to say, you know, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, outside of that, I think with the, where we're heading with this motion is, uh, no matter if one or both or neither show up next time, we just simply have to put it down and make a vote. I mean, I, I think we're doing a favor for both of them by tabling it this time. But next time, um, you know, I've, I've got it down. We've all looked at it. I think we think they're both excellent. I don't think we can be wrong with either one. But I would like everybody who's going to get a board position to show up to the council the night they get it. Yeah. Again, a good point. Uh, Member Jordan. Just need to understand from... Uh, the city attorney, is there, is that acceptable for us to, basically we're saying it's mandatory for them to show up. And we're starting a precedent in my mind for all the other boards out there, right? Right, it, it, it's, not, it's not mandatory. Council has made it known that they would like the applicants to come. Right. Um, I've also stated if they don't, you still have to pick somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, I think what we'll do is we'll convey to the applicants and the clerk that they really would like you to come uh, when you're nominated. It's not mandatory, it's not in the code's requirement, but we'll certainly, if that's council's direction, advise them that council certainly would like to have them at the meeting. Okay, you said the word nominated, and it's really not nominated. It's really anyone who puts their application in, we get it. You get it, but right. at the meeting, you will nominate somebody for that position, and you will right. Vote. But they don't know if they're nominated. So anybody who puts the application in, in my mind, it sounds like everyone should show up. Yes, right? that's correct. Everybody who has put an application, the application in, that's in. correct. Okay, so that's a new procedure that we're starting. That's, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing from counsel. I don't know that it's a new, but it, it needs to be revitalized. 
and that's what we're doing, and that's what you do. Okay, any further discussion? I just want to add to that. I, I think a majority of the board appointees that have taken place since we came on in 16, we have never seen. And I would like mm -hmm. to see them here. And when they do come, sometimes it's kind of a neat little honor. And whether they just stand up and say thank you or to say, you know, I appreciate being on here. I've lived here so long and so on. But I think a vast majority we have not really seen. So I'd, I would like to change that in some way, whether it just be, you know, they understand we want them to be there or if somewhere down the road we say it's got to kind of be mandatory. But right now I think if we just go with the maybe the way it's explained from the clerk's office, maybe if we just started with a little bit more, um, you know, this is what's happening and, and you – it would be good for you to be there. Might get it done. I'm not sure we're doing that, and I'm not sure we're not. Hmm. I, I think the, the, you, you all made a, a good point, and I think the clerk's office certainly will take action on it. Uh, we, we can strongly suggest that they they come, and the council likes to have the members uh, that are coming. Um, we can't make it mandatory. I mean, there's no way to do that. Uh, so, but I'm sure they will put an extra emphasis on it and okay. take it from there. We have a motion and a second. Any, Ms. Stokel? Last thing. I know this is really frustrating, but this is a really good problem to have, and I just want to draw back to one of our goals. I think it was last year. Mm -hmm. Work on improving our boards, getting more people applying. So I'm very happy. Great. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Not hearing any. Um, all those in favor say yes. Yes. Any opposed, like sign, passes unanimously. Next item, please. Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, city Council tabled this item at the regular City Council meeting on April 23rd, 2019 at 630. Regular member Arlene Baker has been absent from three consecutive regularly scheduled meetings from the Planning and Zoning Commission. Ms. Baker was unable to attend the regular meeting on April 3rd, 2019, at which time the Commission reviewed Ms. Baker's written request for a six-month leave of absence. The Planning, Commission, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission is recommending action be taken to allow Ms. Baker to continue to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission and authorize leave of absence for a six-month period from April 2019 to September 2019. Additionally, um, at the last meeting, member Robert Shavir um, had been absent for four meetings out of the past six of the regularly scheduled meetings of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Mr. Shafir did peer, appear at the regular meeting on April 3rd, 2019, at which time the Commission reviewed his verbal request to waive his absences. The Planning and Zoning Commission is requesting action be taken to allow Mr. Shafir to continue to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission after further review, no action is needed from council at this time since Mr. Shavir has not been missed more than 50% of the regular special or workshop meetings of that entity within the six month period. Okay. I just lost my place. You're pointing in zoning commission. Uh, what's your pleasure, council? I think last time our, we tabled it because um, I believe Mem Member Jordan had some questions of uh, uh, who would oh, take yeah. her place, would right. she step down, but there are alternates that can take her place. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that she has some um, family problems that she needs to deal with first. So I would say my motion would be to uh, approve her request to uh, continue serving on planning and zoning. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed, like sign, that passes unanimously. Uh, okay. Uh, um, I thought there were two parts to it, but I guess not. Um, I would like to... Uh, just comment to the members of the planning and zoning if, if they are uh, listening. I did listen to their last meeting, um, and it was certainly very interesting. Um, one of the things they brought up, and I think the chairman made a very good point about we did send back something for them to look at, and he was wondering why, because it wasn't part of the procedure. 
uh, and, he, and he was, he's correct. But I, I, as I recall, we did that because we felt that um, we might not pay, be, uh, they were concerned we weren't paying enough uh, heed to what they had to say. And it was, it was done in good faith that we said, mm -hmm. well, you know, we've changed this, you want to take another look. And that's, uh, that is our prerogative. It was meant with the best of intentions, so I apologize to uh, any, any members of that uh, board that may have been offended. Uh, but by the same token, and for the same reason he gave about us, um, they didn't make a uh, decision on something and, and uh, tabled it to send it back to us. Not the same item or anything, and it was in different timings. But that's not part of the procedure either. Uh, they are an advisory board to the council. Uh, I would request at this time that uh, unless there's something very extraordinary, which I, I don't think, I can't imagine what it would be, but. Uh, it, it, their advisory board and we need their uh, decision in order to make a decision on what the item is about. So uh, rather than and send something back to us, please send, it, send your decision. We will look at what you have to say very carefully and we always consider it very carefully. Uh, and then we will make our decision, which is, is the final decision, and that's what we're required to do. So I just wanted to, to uh, say that, make sure we all understand that what we did was um, meant to be sensitive to them. And what I'm suggesting is, is yes, let's state the procedures and go forth. Next item, please. Yes, sir, the 2019-2020 Student Advisory Council membership appointments. On April 23, 2019, City Council confirmed the appointments of 8 of 12 Student Advisory Council member seats for the 2019-2020 term, with the exception of four students from Astronaut High School. The Student Advisory um, now has the four applicants for Astronaut High School being 12th grade, Jahia Johnson, 11th grade, Taylor Batson, 10th grade, Emily Ellis, 9th grade, Savannah Seaver, for your consideration. Much pleasure. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to confirm the four proposed slate of students from Astronaut High School as members of the 2019-20 Student Advisory Council as appointed by their school. I have a, mo I have a motion, a second from Member Stokel. Any further discussion? All those in favor say yes. Yes. Any opposed, like sign, passes unanimously. Next item, please. Titusville Coco Airport Authority, Dr. John Levitt has submitted his resignation effective April 18, 2019, since, he's no, since he no longer lives in the city of Titusville limits, city limits. His term expires on July 11, 2019. Currently, there are no applications on file for your consideration. Staff will post the vacancy on the website and bulletin boards, et cetera. Uh, I have a question. I, I think in there somewhere, Dr. Levitt recommended uh, Dr. Patel. Have, have we contacted him and asked him if he's interested in? Or could we? Maybe that's a better way of stating it. Uh, Mayor, it, I believe it's not our procedure to reach the clerk's office to reach out to individuals our, from our staff. Um, I know city council may, if sometimes when they know the person, they may do that. Um, but we're advertising and we take them as we get them. Okay, but it would be within council's ability, Mr. City Attorney, to talk to anybody sure. we want. Yeah. Okay, I think we will handle it that way. Thank you, Clerk. Um, okay, the. Uh, are we tight as food? Okay, good. Well, there's nobody there. G, next item. I think you want to vote, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please. Move to accept the resignation of Dr. Levitt uh, from the Tysol Coco Airport Authority. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Second by the Vice Mayor. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Say yes. 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 Any opposed? Like sign. And uh, I assume a Letter of, of thanks. Uh, we'll go with it. Yes. Okay. Uh, next item. 
Titusville Environmental Commission member Jim Yance annually requests a leave of absence from June, July, and August regular TEC meetings as he is a professor and will be teaching a course that conflicts with these meetings, dates, and times. Okay. Um, Rush Pleasure Council. I would move to approve the request for a leave of absence for um, TEC member Jim Yant. Uh, from June to August 2019. Second. I have a motion and a second by Member <coughs> Jordan. And, <coughs> excuse me. Um, any further discussion? I hear none. Uh, all those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed, like sign, passes unanimously. Petitions and requests. If anybody would like to speak under petitions or requests, please come forward. familiar with Jim Yant since he also is on the Environmental Commission with myself. I'm Michael Myjack and I live in Alpine and I'm here to ask almost for the same thing. Um, my other half recently suffered a traumatic brain injury and cannot fly and wants to attend her granddaughter's uh, high school graduation in Seattle. So and then they go and spend a month in the mountains of Maine. So. I'm not going to be here for the next couple of months. I'll be here for tomorrow. I won't be here in June. I may be here in July, but I won't be here in August and September most likely. So I too need to beg your request forgiveness for me for not attending those three meetings. As three meetings, sir? Three. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. And you have the date. There's no prohibition of making a motion at this point with somebody? No, uh, Mike. Yes. Uh, Mike, you got you guys have two alternates, right? Yes, as far as I know, we're, we're, we're okay. Uh, yeah, we I lost think you're... a member recently, and I was kind of expecting someone to... to... Who did we lose? It's okay. My mind is not on, okay. on TEC. We're I just spent four leader. days in the neuro ICU, so okay. if you'll okay. excuse me, I'm, 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 his lead, I'm just so. here to... To ask so, and any rate, I would move to approve uh, Mr. Majak's leave of absence from the TEC this summer. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say yes. Yes. Good. Any opposed? Like sign. Well, Thank you for those coming. heritage trees. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Stan Johnson, 860 Poinsett Avenue. I'm, I'm addressing you tonight as a professional engineer, and I have a, a, a professional uh, law to uh, present to you, and that is the law is that water flows downhill. It's a law of nature. It's a law of God. And if you're looking at a water stream, this would be the up, upflow. Up, upstream, this would be downstroke. So if in the middle you put something like a dam or restriction, what happens is the upstream goes up higher. That's another law of nature. You might call it a law of God. I'm asking city council to recognize that because that's what I've written some affidavits that are uh, that say something like city council is grossly negligent by not having floodways outside of the city limits maintained. And now that's what I'm talking about. When you get a restriction in there, it goes up higher. I'm asking you to recognize this law of God, law of nature, whatever you want to call it, because that's what happens. And when I write this affidavit, which I did seriously, sent it even to the courthouse, and a second one, is that I still have no response from council or city manager, and I'm asking you to recognize it because it's important. It has to do with protection of houses and so forth. In fact, is these particular floodways that I'm talking about, when they do back up, they'll go right over to Dan Diesel's mother-in-law's house. And by golly, so if it comes to the point where saying is, well, who flooded 
Dandy is a mother-in-law house. Well, some people will say it was an act of God. Well, some people might say it's an act of God and city council here. That's where the water came from. Because it's your action, your choice, do not have these floodways maintained. Not only that is, you're violating your stormwater management plan, which I sent you a copy of parts of it, and it says it's supposed to be done. It's supposed to be maintained. You're violating that. You're violating FEMA laws. Because in order to have the firm maps proper, by golly, you've got calculations that says these, these floodways are supposed to be maintained. And they're supposed to be maintained. So you're violating FEMA law. You're violating I-95 plans. I-95 plans, we've got box culverts, seven foot, twin seven foots, twin six foot box culverts, other box culverts under I-95. That design says you're supposed to, that, that there's, these floodways are supposed to be maintained. Is that, is Your that time end? is up, sir. May I have more time, please? Anyone want to make that motion? No, sir. Okay, thank you. I, I would only comment that we've met with Mr. Johnston many, many times over many, many years on almost the exact same subject, and things are attained the way they're supposed to be. And. Uh, uh, some of them by the county, some of them by the city, and uh, we, we don't agree with Mr. Mr. Johnson, unfortunately. Uh, and anybody else want to speak on the petitions and requests? Uh, okay. The next item is consent agenda. Yes, sir. Council, um, we have cards on items 8A, 8C, 8K, and 8L. I'll read those again. A, C, K and L. Do any of uh, council members want to pull any other items? Okay, please bear with me as I read with a very froggy voice for the record. Consent agenda item 8A, approve the 2020 City of Titusville strategic plan. Um, consent agenda item 8B has two resolutions that Richard will begin to read and then I'll, I'll do the rest. Okay. Throat is bothering you all. No, I'll, I'll drive through it. But we have we passed out two resolutions as part of this one, so we, you will require a roll call vote um, for 8B. Approved Schedule B of the Master Lease Purchase Agreement to finance and purchase the new BSNA software for $1,058,000. Approved Schedule C of the Master Lease Purchase Agreement to finance and purchase 10 new police vehicles and radios for $511,790 and buy out 11 police rental vehicles for $66,689, one fire vehicle for $34,273, 40 SCBA air packs and 65 SCBA face masks for $400,000, facilities vehicles, uh, purchase three roads and street vehicles for $18,000, uh, $971 and one for $40,518, one garbage truck for $293,544, one great all evacu uh, excavator for $434,608 for a total on Schedule C of $1,838,000 uh, and $335. That's easy for you to say. Consent agenda item 8C, approve the attached budget amendment and award of contract to Advanced Case Parts Refrigeration, LLC of Coral Springs, Florida, in the amount of $19,995 for the removal of non-functioning air conditioning equipment and furnishings to install new equipment for the laboratory services at Blue Heron Operations Building and authorize the city manager to execute the contract. Consent agenda item 8D, Approve the purchase subject to resolution of sale and purchase terms by the city attorney and city manager of new uh, Wonderware software, Win 911 software, training upgrades to the Blue Herring uh, Osprey Water Rec Reclamation Facilities, supervisory control data acquisition systems 
from InSource Solutions of Richmond, Virginia, in the amount of $46,068.25, and authorize the city manager to put in place the instruments necessary for the purchase. Consent Agenda Item 8E, approve the award to CDM Smith Incorporated in the amount of $194,897 to provide engineering consultant services, including but not limited to the preparation and design drawings and specifications permitting bidding assistance and services during the construction to install seven diesel-driven uh, emergency electrical generators for seven lift stations and authorize the mayor to execute the work order. Consent Agenda Item 8F, approve the award of the Wash Rack Improvement Project to SDV Services LLC of Titusville, Florida in the amount of $239.50 for the construction of a Wash Rack and Public Works Department and authorize the mayor to execute the contract. Consent Agenda Item 8G, approve the selection of governmentjobs.com and award the contract subject to the resolution in terms by the city manager and city attorney for online services designating support to human resources activities, including recruitment selection, applicant tracking, reporting and analysis, and human resources automation at a unit cost of $30,090, including setup training support services for one year. Consent Agenda Item 8H, Approve, appropriate and approve the use of $10,000 in forfeiture funds for the repair and maintenance of forfeiture vehicles. Consent Agenda Item 8I, approve the award of contract to Giles Electric Company of South Daytona, Florida in the amount of $59,255 to furnish and install optical fiber systems at the Osprey Water Reclamation Facility and authorize the mayor to execute the contract. Consent Agenda Item 8J, Approve the award of change order one in the amount of $155,000 with preferred materials incorporated of Orlando, Florida to construct the city's FY19 annual road resurfacing and authorize the mayor to execute said change order. This action is subject to approval of the funds allocation within the mid-year budget request. Consent agenda item 8K. Approve the Save Our Lagoon project cost share funding interlocal agreement between the city of Titusville and Brevard County in the amount of 100 11, uh, 813 in funding towards the construction of THS Baffle Box Project. Additionally, approve the associated budget amendment and authorize the mayor to execute the agreement. Consent Agenda Item 8L, approve the Save Our Lagoon project cost sharing interlocal agreement between the City of Titusville and Brevard County in the amount of $35,000 $35, in funding towards the construction of the Coleman Pond Maps Project and authorize the mayor to execute the contract. And just as a reminder, uh, you, you do have a resolution of on 8B. Correct. Those are resolutions 15, 2019, and 16, 2019. Okay. At this point, are we pulling the... Uh... Yes, sir. You, you do have cards on 8A, 8C, 8K, and 8L. Okay. Uh, call the cards, please, on item, item A. Stan Johnston. Uh, Stan Johnston, 860 Poinsettia Avenue, um, and I'm uh, speaking on this strategic plan 2020. Uh, there's some certainly some things I approve, but some things I do not approve of. Uh, and uh, uh, goal number five on that reads, expand methods to enhance two-way communication. Uh, that's, that's, I, I want to very much endorse it. That's a good idea. But right now is for the past five weeks or more, I have called the city and I've asked the secretary, please contact city manager and council members to return my call about emails that I've sent them and give, it, give her my number. So for the past five weeks, and I've did that every day for the past week, not Saturdays and Sundays, and I've only had one return call all that time. So when we talk about two-way communication, we have a problem, just as was demonstrated just a few minutes ago when uh, the mayor said that, uh, uh, that they have somebody maintaining these floodways. Well, it's, it's, I wish that, you see, if I'm saying this and I just announced myself as a professional engineer, you could send me to the board 
because I've put even affidavits and oath for if I'm not telling the truth on this. So I'm saying Mr. Johnson is not correct in what he says. Not only have I done it in writing in affidavits, I've done it in two da aff sworn to affidavits. You could get me in big trouble, but you don't do it. Not only that is that in this, this particular case is that I've asked for many years to just have, just hire for just, just a very little bit of money, a professional engineer who will dispute me. Very low cost. I mean, city attorney could do that. You guys could do it. We got all this money. And the reason you don't do it is because what he will do is he will explain to you is that and disclose, expose deception and dishonesty by city council and the city manager. So this is important and I want to, uh, I'm supporting this um, uh, goal number five, effective communication. And regarding goal number two is if efficient and effective services and it talks about developing a sustainability plan. Now, as I just explained to you in the petitions and requests from the public, is it's not sustainable what you have. In other words, you have floodways that are not maintained in violation of your stormwater master plan, I-95 drainage plan, and I've sent this to you. I've sent you, you know, that I just had it in my hand. May I have more time, please? Anyone wish to give me more time? No, sir, your three minutes okay. are up. Thank you. Call the next card, please. Right uh, I just want to say I really enjoyed this workshop process that we did this time around and um, this is probably more from member Jordan since it's your first time seeing it on page 84 where she kind of summarizes I typically will take that when we do our budget workshops and when we start finalizing the budget and we'll go back to what we said our goals were because I think she did a real good job of it incorporating and what it is at, at the heart that we're looking for so that was just a tip I had that I found helpful when we go through the budget process just to recall that document. Yep. Call the next card, please. Clark. Uh, excuse me. The next item is Consent Agenda 8C, Stan Johnston. Mr. Johnson, I would remind you that you have to stay relevant to the item at hand, or I will ask you to sit down. Okay, I think Once that's you talk at a particular subject, you are not supposed to repeat the same thing over and over again. And okay. if you do, I will ask you to sit down. Um, I believe that I don't have an 8C item. I have an 8K and an 8L. Okay. Did I write 8C? Uh oh. Okay. Goodbye. Okay, I'm 8K. 8K. I don't know. I guess I messed up. Okay, 8K. Cost sharing interlocal agreement, Titusville THS Bath. Uh, my name is Stan Johnson, 860 Point Set Avenue. And uh, I'm going for approval of this conditional upon certain things, is that I believe that this baffle box should have been approved through a process that goes through your floodplain manager. And that was to, to, to establish a no-rise certification. I've gone over this a little bit with Mr. Cook, and that is, is that uh, uh, in this particular case, I believe this is the same watershed that is Baker subdivision. And in this case, we still have some homes in the 100 year floodplain and even a half inch increase will put half inch more water in these homes. So um, uh, this, I want, I want a condition on this is that you send it through the process which reviews it for a no rise certification that will require a professional engineer to endorse this. You don't have this right now. All these other baffle boxes say, oh well, somebody signed it off years ago. You don't have it. 
So I want you to get a professional engineer to endorse this for, for effect upon the 100-year floodplain so Mrs. Bojack won't have any more water in her living room. But she hadn't had it yet anyways. But, so that's important. Uh, so I'm asking for that, uh, that to happen, and I believe it's a requirement of review. It's crossing a, this is crossing a, I believe this is the one that crosses the uh, flood zone elevation for Baker subdivision. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Clerk, please call the next card. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, for item 8L, Stan Johnston. Uh, Stan Johnston, 860 Point Set Avenue. I didn't have approval or disapproval for this, and I had neither. I'm not sure where it's located. So I'm asking, where the heck is this uh, uh, Coleman uh, Pond located? Because it may have effect on some areas that I'm concerned about regarding the flood zone elevation. Coleman Pond is off the, uh, across the parish medical center. Uh, it's off the subdivision with the state streets, Tennessee Ave, Georgia Ave, those streets. There's a pond right next to US-1. It's uh, an outfall pond that was moved uh, a number of years ago uh, near the development where the apartment complex was pro proposed. Thank you, Mr. Directly Cook. north. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Cook. Any other cards, clerk? Uh, no. All right. Uh, I'll ask for a motion. I don't think we have, do we have a motion already? We didn't make it. Yes, sir. Uh, ask for motion on items A through L. Move to approve items A through L on the consent agenda. And a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, this is, we uh, will do a roll call vote for the whole thing. Uh, yes, sir. Member Jordan. Yes. Member Nelson. Yes. Mayor Johnson? Yes. Vice Mayor Diesel? Yes. Member Stockel? Yes. Passes unanimously. Next item, sir. Yes, sir. CBDG FY 2020 action, Annual Action Plan. Each year, the city submits an annual action plan to HUD outlining the programs and activities consistent with the goals and objectives of the five year strategic plan. It will it, it will undertake during the upcoming grant program year. On March 8, 2016, City Council adopted the City's 2016 through 2020 CBDG strategic plan for the CBDG grant program, which outlined the priority needs and strategies that will govern the City's annual action plan over the next five-year cycle. On March 12, 2019, City Council approved the funding recommendations for for year four, FY 2020, of the strategic plan cycle, also known as the annual action plan. As a result, staff has finalized the programs and funding levels and completed the corresponding action plan documents to be transmitted to HUD. Staff is requesting the approval of the city's FY 2020 action plans as presented and authorize the neighborhood services director and mayor to sign the associated grant application certifications as required and, submittal to the, and submit the plan to HUD via Brevard County Home Consortium. If approved, a 30-day public comment period will follow prior to submission. And Ms. Franklin is available to answer any questions that you may have concerning the CBDG annual plan. Any questions of Ms. Franklin? I see none. Hi. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, are there any calls on uh, any cards on this item, Clerk? Uh, yes, sir. We have two cards. The first is Kirk uh, Davis. Good evening, sir. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Kirk Davis. I live at 3740 Hickory Park Drive here in Titusville. And I'd just like to say good evening to you, Mr. Mayor, good Vice evening, Mayor, sir. and the rest of the members of the council. Um, I'm a member of the... Uh, the community revitalization strategy uh, area community group. And we are here represented here by the folks that are behind me. And uh, I had a, the pleasure of meeting Terry Franklin uh, just the end of last year, and we talked about several things, several projects for the community. And one of the first things that came to fore was the uh, 
naming of uh, 405 South Street to honor uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. As I understand it, there was a proposal that went up before the legislation for review. And I think there may have been uh, a change on the name for the, the actual uh, honorary uh, street name. So I, I thought Terry was going to mention that tonight, but uh, that's something we can talk about later. But anyway, I'm here to endorse that change from Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Boulevard, uh, Memorial Boulevard, or whatever it was before, to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Highway or Boulevard, whichever the, uh, would apply. And that's why I'm here to, uh, to okay. say that we approve of that change. Staff, anything? Any comments you'd like to make? Um, just in communication um, with our representative, um, it, the honorary naming did make it through um, the Senate, and it's at the House uh, stage right now. The bill was worded uh, as uh, simply Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We've asked for clarification. Um, if that is similar to a memorial highway, and that is the information I've gotten back, that it is a, a similar designation. And they will look at if they can change it to memorial highway or if it will stay with the bill language that says boulevard. Okay, and we're here to endorse that change. Okay, and but we don't know that the change is going to be made at this point? Or? No, I'm, I've made um, contact with um, our... Uh, Florida Department of Transportation contact, and she's looking into whether they can change it at their level. And should they not be able to change it at this point uh, without starting all over? What's your, your desire at that point? Well, we we, we want to cooperate with whatever you have to do. Absolutely. Just, whatever it takes to um, have it flow through the process, we'll willing to make those uh, arrangements uh, at the proper time. Okay, but flow through in the present form or the form that you well, the, prefer? The, the, the form that would include the full title uh, for Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and whether the preference is either for Memorial Highway or Boulevard. I, I suspect I, I would prefer for Memorial Highway and do a Boulevard, but I'm not, I don't have my hands on that document to see exactly how it's stated, but that would be the recommendation we'll put forward. Oh, okay. But I, I guess I'm a little confused as to because of all the wording involved, and I'll, I'll ask your help on this. But yeah. one, once something is put in in for the year, if it doesn't make it through, um, well, I wouldn't say if it doesn't make it through. If it makes it through, it's going to go through the way they say they want it, not necessarily to say the way you say right. you want it. Right. Right. So would you like it in that case to be uh, withdrawn, or would you like to, for it to continue no, through? Continue. Otherwise, you've got to re-put it in next year. We'll, we, we'll continue it, whatever it takes. Uh, to get I, I'm through. not sure I understand. What, how, what do you mean continue it? Continue it this year or continue it next year? Okay. If it doesn't flow this year, then whenever it's eligible again, we'll We'll make that okay. proposal It's not again. that it won't flow. It's that you may not get the, the wording as you desire. Right. Well, that's something we can, we can uh, review and agree on. I, I don't have the document in front of me to review that. Well, so. but you have to make – I'm not trying to put you in a bad place. I'm just trying to tell you the, 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 way, it, the way it works up there. And, and Mr. Uh, Attorney, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, they're not – I don't think they'd send it back and say, do you want it reworded or anything like that? I couldn't speak to that. I think what the mayor's asking is if they approve it with language, that's not the exact language that we would like to okay. see. We can have the option at that point to reject it and resubmit it with the language you like, or would, would it be the position of the community that will just accept it with the less than optimal language and not wait? The uh, discussion I had with um, their office, um, with the, our representative's office, was that whatever the bill language was would be the language that the local resolution would have to say. It would have to match. Um, and if we are not happy with what the bill says at this point, we need to stop it. If, before it gets to the house. If you want to get it exactly the way you want it, then I suggest you withdraw but, it this but, year and 
start over again next year because otherwise it'll go through the way they want it to go through. I mean, the way it's written up there because that's the and way I it just works. want to clarify that the information the city relayed to their office did say Mar Dr. Martin Luther King um, Jr. Okay. That um, but somewhere between that transmittal and the writing of the bill, the doctor got dropped off of the, the name and they added Boulevard. In your in con right. you're in t contact with FDOT to see if they can make that change at the local level. Yeah. They, uh, we, I'm in discussion with them on, on that change. They're not sure they can do it, though, because the bill is already written. I'm not asking you to make a decision on it. I'm just presenting to you what will happen. They may change it. They may okay. not. Right. And, and at that point. Okay. I, I think we're on the same page with that. We're, we'll take whatever is approved. Uh, by the state at this point, and we'll go forward from there. I'll right, certainly sir. continue with DOT. If I get back that they can change it, we'll certainly change it. She, she is trying to change it at this well, present exactly. time. And perhaps at the next legislative session, we could ask for that change to be made. Right. So we, we get it up and we get it memorialized, and then we make that, the necessary That's where changes. I was headed with that, because if we can get, get it through, if it's already down to the process of getting it out, get it out. And then if it comes to the point where we're making a you know, tweak to it later, then we'll do it later. But, it, but now, for now, we just go for what we have. All right. All right. All right. We, we're all together, I think. I think we, all, so. we all get it. I just didn't want to, you get a surprise and say I didn't know right. that or whatever. But thank you very much. But, but thank you. We will assist in any way we can to get it done the, the way you want. Just all can't right. guarantee it. That's Thanks all. Right. Thanks, yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to say, and, and you don't really need to come back up, I just wanted to say that uh, everything's been said that I was thinking and as far as, hey, we better do it now. Um, this is, in, in my mind, and I think many people's mind, kind of a long overdue uh, tribute. And uh, I've spoken to several groups about it, and I wanted to commend this group, who I see here and speak often. Um, whenever it comes up, you're here. Yeah. And certainly I've, I've spoken to other groups and other people who are interested, and I'm sure they're right there with you, but they don't do the legwork that you guys tend to do. And I, I really and truly, uh, I think that's important. But what I was going to add, and you've already fixed that, is don't take it back because, you know, how it goes sometimes when you get involved with votes and government and everything else. So I like the idea that we can fix it, but we got to get it up first. So uh, I appreciate y'all's effort, and thank you so much. So... Um with that, we're at uh, 9A. We need a motion. Move to authorize. Excuse me, the sir. Oh, we have another card. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Uh, Stan Johnston. I'll make it real short. Stan Johnston, 860 Point Avenue. I'd like for the people who are here for um, who are supporting what the uh, last speaker just uh, uh, said, I'd like them to maybe. Re Stand up or do something. Your, those sir, are, sir. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'd like them to be recognized uh, as, a, as a group, that uh, those people who are supporting the, uh, uh, that uh, uh, memorial naming of, the, of South Street. Oh, well, I guess they're not going to stand up. I thought they were. We, we already recognized them, sir. You, oh, did you? I, wasn't, I was asleep. No, but okay, but I'm I'm awake right now to to uh, recognize that Terry's Terry's doing a great job, so thank you, Terry. All right, I'm not always awake. Move to authorize the neighborhood services director and the mayor to sign the grant application certification as required, and approve the submittal of the community development block grant, uh, 2020. Annual action plan to HUD. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All, all those in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed, like sign, passes unanimously. Next item, please. Next item is 9A, ordinance number 13, 2019, amending chapter 29, article 11, height overlay. This is the su second public reading and final public hearing on this item. Ordinance number 13, 2019, an ordinance of the City of Titusville, Florida, amending sections 29, 162, maximum building height, 
and 29163 transitional height plane of chapter 29, article 11, height overlay of the code of ordinances, which created a height overlay to increase maximum building heights in specified areas lying east of US-1, north of Buffalo Road, and south of Cheney Highway by clarifying the zoning districts affected by the height overlay and by amending the regulations and transitional height plane conditions associated with increased building height in the overlay, providing for severability, repeal of conflicting ordinances, and effective date, and incorporation into the code. On April 9th, 2019, Council tabled the item to allow staff additional time to review the ordinance and provide additional information regarding the tra uh, transitional setbacks from the roadways. After speaking with the affected property owners, as requested by Council, the language relating to the transitional height zone has been amended. The new language is the transitional height plane shall begin at a point 50 feet or 75 feet or mixed use buildings above any side setback line or a front or rear property line and then extended upward at an angle of 45 degrees over the lot of the non-residential or multifamily building. And Ms. Busak is available to answer any questions that you may have regarding this. Ms. Busak, any comments or presentation? Council, any questions of Ms. Busak? Yes. Go right yes. yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ms. Busak, planning and zoning wanted a whereas clause in there. Did we put that in? Uh, yes, ma'am, we did. I thought we did. Okay, that was, that was the question I had. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Member Stokel. Okay. I, th I think I remember when we discussed this item prior, um, Ms. Busaka, but I just want to clarify. So when we were talking about this conditional use permit, uh, I think we said it wasn't necessarily needed because it would just cost more for the developer, and with the conditions outlined, we would be okay. What is your yeah. opinion? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. That and this does not include a conditional use permit for height. Correct. So, um, did was P and Z aware of that? I got like, uh, yes, and and they it, still want a CUP. That's correct. Okay. Okay. I just, yeah. I, I if I recall correctly, I think when we were discussing this prior, it this would I think just to add an undue burden I think for developers and is not needed. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay, All right, I'm going to open the public hearing. Clerk, are there any cards on this item? Uh, yes, sir. Three cards. The first is Stan Johnston. Uh, Stan Johnston, 860 Poinsettia Avenue. I've been here when this has been debated years and years ago. And there was something about this city made it special. This city was, is, uh, you know, it was, had booms and busts, and when it had a boom, what it did, it, it developed low-rise, and that's what the characteristics of this, of this community is. It's not Little Miami. Now, when you put houses, or uh, right now is that we have um, uh, a changing of density. It used to be 15 units per acre, except for tourists, I believe it was 20 units per acre. Now we go, we're going up to 30 units per acre. Uh, it's a big jump, and we're also transferring d development rights and so forth. So. So this, in these particular areas, it's going to turn them into like a little Miami, as far as I'm concerned. And that means is the high rises, you don't see the sky, 75 foot and higher. 75 foot, is, that's, that's like seven stories. So um, give it some thought, is that this is a big change in our features of our community. It will no longer be, uh, certainly in those particular areas, it will no longer be the no rise type of things. It'll be taking out and what I can see like when, when I when I went to I've been to the land and I've seen the shuttle go off I've been to st. Petersburg and seen the shuttle go off I've even been to Jacksonville and I've seen a rocket go off that's a long view a long view in other words we can our, our uh, it's like the prairie we can see for miles and miles but when you put up a building in front of you you can't see that and it, it changes the character of the community so I'm asking you to consider this issue an issue that had been brought up years ago by a number of people, and they're all a lot of them are just gone. So uh, uh, it's going to be a, a change, and if, that, if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. So thank you. Next card, please. 
Rodney Honeycutt. Uh, Philip Knorr. Name and address for the record, please, sir. Thank you. Mayor, members of the City Council, my name is Philip Knorr. My business address is 1795 West Nassau Boulevard in Melbourne. Uh, myself and Mr. Honeycutt were both here tonight in case there were any questions or any concerns that you have. We know this is in front of you, and uh, uh, we hope that you will be proceeding forward with uh, an affirmative vote, but we're pleased to take any questions or comments that you might have. Okay. Any questions? I see none. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next card, please. Okay, I thought you said three. Um, that was the applicant, so I assume you don't have anything else you want to speak about? No, sir. Okay, you, you do have the prerogative. I'll uh, council discussion. Actually, sir, that he is not the applicant on this. This is a city. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's representing it. Okay. There, but I, but I think this this admit, this height um, is not regarding a specific project. Okay. Uh, at any rate, uh, I'll, uh, council discussion. Yes. Well, I think we've been talking about this. Oh shoot! I think we've been talking about this for a while now, um, and I know uh, originally. We approved it, came back for, before us for some cleanup, and I think this is pretty much the cleanup. So we're basically approving what we've already approved with, with the cleanup language. Um, and apparently more of planning and zoning was happier this time than they were the first time around. So at this time, I would move to approve ordinance number 13-2019. Well, we Further, uh, oh, we have further discussion. Discussion, yes, oh, please. Sorry about that. Uh, Vice Mayor. Not a lot of discussion. <clears throat> I pushed my button before you spoke in pretty much the same thing. I feel like this is one of those situations that we have analyzed and reanalyzed and done so prudently, and, and I'm glad we have. But now I, I totally agree. It's um, We're where we need to be, and it's cleaned up. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? I see uh, one more light. Uh, city Attorney. One more light. Member Nelson asked about a whereas. Mm -hmm. um, I think it had to do with Antigua Bay, where you referenced at the recommendation of PNZ. I don't think it made it through, so I would ask that uh, the motion to approve include the condition that that whereas be included. I know we talked about it and it was intended to be there, it just might not have come through. Well, yeah, I'm, I apologize. I typed it in. I just have a ghost in the machine, I guess. <laughs> get rid of that. Get rid of that ghost. Uh, okay. I'll uh, I'll close the uh, public hearing and uh, uh, would you like to make a motion. Now I now I get to now you get it. okay. <laughs> I would move to approve ordinance number thirty thirteen dash twenty nineteen amending chapter twenty nine article uh, eleven height overlay. And I believe I, with that, whereas in there, I thought I had seen it in there, and I wasn't quite sure. Including the whereas. Including the whereas. And I have a second from Member Jordan. Did you want to speak? Yeah, uh, they're over there discussing something. <laughs> <laughs> That's them over there. You're oh, yeah. over there. You got to watch Stay those on guys your side of the table. Sure, so. <laughs> Explain to me a little bit about the whereas, please. I, I, I guess I missed that. Ms. Basaka. The intent was to recognize that Antigua Bay has a development agreement which has specific height requirements, and it just simply makes sure that we're all aware of the fact that that development agreement would be site specific and would, um, if there was a conflict, the development agreement would be the one that would be the. Um, What's the word I want? Well, well correct. They've, they, yeah. they've secured certain rights under that development agreement, right, right. and they would somewhat be grandfathered, and we're going to make sure that this does not take away or impact okay. the rights they acquired through that development okay. agreement. Okay, I just wanted to make it clear. Thank you. Okay. Um, any, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, 
you made you made the, you, you made it. Yes, roll call vote, please. Member Nelson. Yes. Mayor Johnson. Yes. Vice Mayor Diesel. Yes. Member Stockel. Yes. Member Jordan. Yes. Passes unanimously. Next item, please. Next item is item 9C, ordinance number 14, 2019, regarding setbacks and planned industrial development. This is uh, the public hearing on this ordinance. An ordinance of the city of Tysville, Florida, amending the code of ordinances to amend setbacks in the planned industrial development PID zoning district by amending chapter 28 zoning, specifically amending section 28, 320 planned industrial development PID, providing for severability, repeal of conflicting ordinances, an effective date and incorporation into the code. On November 27, 2019, Council authorized staff to review the setback requirements in the industrial area, Space Coast Industrial Park, which is zoned Plan Industrial PID. Council tabled this item at its April 9, 2019 meeting and sent the item back to the Planning and Zoning Commission for reconsideration. The Planning and Zoning Commission reconsidered this item at their 8 May 2019 meeting and approved the approved by 7-0. The motion included amending the rear yard setbacks from 50 to 25 feet, leaving all other proposed amendments as the original code in the language. Uh, Ms. Pasaka? I thought perhaps that there would be a question about why the uh, planning and zoning had recommended what they did. And so I brought the, the minutes of the meeting and uh, basically, uh, Chairman Williams said that he believed that setbacks help create more open and green space and make it more inviting, and Member Seavers said that he had researched Brevard County setbacks in the city of Titusville, pretty much mirrors their setbacks with the exception of the rear yard setback, which is 25 feet in the county in, in Titusville. It's 50 feet. There was also some discussion about um, deed restrictions that in the industrial park. And so the decision was, Member Richardson made the motion to recommend to amend the year, rear yard setback from 50 to 25 feet, leaving all other proposed amendments as original code language. And I would just like to bring to the um, council's attention that the county zoning and the city zoning are very different zoning categories, although they have similar names. The county zoning says that it is specifically intended for locations which are served by major roads but are not feasible for light or heavy industrial developments because of their proximity to residential uses. In the case of the city, the actual uh, imp approved uses include light manufacturing. So in the planned industrial development in the city, you're looking at a more intense use than you are looking at in the planned industrial park in the county. And the way that staff has addressed that issue is we have recommended an act a change so that there would be 100 feet to any PID perimeter boundary where there is a residential zoning use or residential land use. That is actually more restrictive than it is today. So the staff is recommending that because of this heavier use, which is permitted in the city than is permitted in the county, we are giving additional buffering to residential, but we are re um, reducing the buffering internally. And so while the um, Planning and Zoning Board th saw similarities between these two zoning, uh, the staff sees them as being somewhat different than they. So our um, recommendation for the decreased setbacks still remain. Hey, yeah. I guess she's through. Member Jordan. Thank you. Um, if you all remember, in full disclosure, this is in my area, one of the, um, and I've already paid my money. So <laughs> this is, it has really no effect unless I decide to do something um, different. 
Um, the, I totally agree with planning and zoning as far as the, the um, backyard setback of 25 feet. That certainly is very helpful. It doesn't help me now, but it's very helpful. I totally disagree with them not agreeing with uh, city staff on reducing the side setbacks. If you look at the numbers that are there, uh, like the front yard, the setback is, is, um, was 50 feet. It went to 35 feet. That is definitely sufficient enough. This is a, a light industrial area. Uh, don't need all that space to be wasted. If anything, you know, when we're ready to expand, we like to have as much room as possible to expand without having to come and get um, permission to uh, add more to our property. So um, I think that the council should look at what the staff has um, suggested. Um, I think it's all, uh, it all makes sense and it certainly gives uh, more leeway for the, the owners out there to expand their business when they need to without having to go through the whole uh, permitting process of asking for more, uh, for permission to go larger than what the, uh, to permit says now. So I, well, everyone else have to speak, but that's, I'll be making that motion just in case. Okay. Uh, Member Stokel. Now, I, I guess I'm confused because I thought the only change PNZ had was on the rear setback. I'm not seeing where they said. That's correct. Okay. They are recommending that the front setback and the side, side. setbacks remain the same. With staff. No, no, as no. they are currently. No. That's the okay, that's where. They, okay. So the staff is recommending a 35-foot front setback, and P&Z would like it to remain at 50. The, okay, I guess I'm just seeing here recommended approval 7-0 and just amending this one portion. But correct, I guess, but what they meant was to, okay. they wanted, the motion says that, but their okay. intent was that it remain unamended from the current setbacks. So the only, so they're okay with everything, and I, I think that we're on the same. I'm surprised to see them. No, no. Let me go back again. Okay. They do not want to amend the front setback, the side yard setback, or the side corner setback. So they want to leave all those at 50, 50, and 35. 50, 30. Yes, yes. Okay. 50, 50, and 35. They only want to amend the rear setback, and they are happy okay, with the so change saying. to the residential language. Okay. And to clarify, this is for PID up against any other type of zoning with the exception of residential. Yes. Now the front, yes. So the front setback would be, regard, unless it's residential, okay. the, again, the side and both of those would be up against any other zoning category. And you can see the maps that we provided show you what the addition, what the zoning is around the areas of PID. Okay. And if you want, we can go over those. But, uh, and, and I do have on page, let's see here, of your document, I have, a co I have the information about the other zoning categories. Mm -hmm. um, and that is on page 362. Okay. That's a comparison of okay. all of the different zoning categories. Yeah, I guess, I guess my, I, I'm definitely okay with it going up against an PID, which I think was what originally Member Jordan was bringing this up. You know, it, that doesn't make sense. My concern would be potentially if we're allowing it and it ends up being a bad thing potentially for something that we just don't know about yet, a restaurant or, or, or something that maybe wouldn't make sense. Um, well, I'm glad that residential is excluded from that. I agree. I, I think there should be a nice buffer between those two. But I, I think if you look, and these maps begin on page three. Uh, let me see here. 357. Oh, no. Page 356. Um, six. Okay. You can see that in, in the area here um, near the airport okay. that the zoning is predominantly M1 and M2. Okay. And there is one area which is on the east side of um, 95 that there is an R1B. That's part of the Willow Creek development. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who have um, that zoning is all part of that development. 
But with that, there would be at least a 100. A 100, that's correct. And then if you go to the next page, you'll see, and that is the um, Riverfront Center, mm -hmm. which, as you can see, except there's GU to the south of that. That's, I believe, the uh, Boeing. Okay. And then the next one is R2 to the north and south, mm -hmm. and both of those would be 100 feet. To the east, you see that there's nothing there that's in the county, but it's all residential land use, so that would also be 100 feet. And the only one is uh, the RC, which is regional commercial. But if you will look on page 367, you can see that that little tiny property is already built out. And if you look at the blue lines, what the 100 feet would mean mm -hmm. is that basically uh, it would be very challenging for any of the PID in the area along US-1 near the river to expand at all because they're already encroaching into the setbacks. Okay. And these maps account for all of the PID they in do. the city? Okay. So that makes me feel a lot better. And um, I, I just want to thank Member Jordan for being kind of proactive with this. I'm all for kind of cleaning it up and making things easier. I, I appreciate the increase to the 100 foot with the residential. I, I think it makes sense. So thank you. Member Jordan, you have your light on? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Um, the only other thing, I think one of the members from P&Z was talking about um, wanting green space. That's the last thing that in the industrial area we care about is the green spaces. How much can we put on our, on our property in order for us to make money? So green space is not that, that important to us for sure. So, so I appreciate staff and what they did in, in studying this thing. I think it does clear up a lot of stuff. And um, because we are growing and because we want more industry to come in, it certainly will help out um, the future people who are coming into that area for sure. And we want that area to grow also. And by the way, um, because if you go to certain properties out there, uh, it's a mismatch of things. There are uh, buildings that are less than 35 feet from their property line. So it, it is not a consistent thing, but I think what we've got now, at least it'll, it'll get us in the right ballpark of where we should be. Thanks. I see no other lights. I'm going to open the public hearing. Clerk, are there any cards on this item? Uh, yes, sir. One card, Stan Johnston. Stan Johnson, 860 Poinsett Avenue. Um, I was at the P&Z meeting, and um, I, I came here because, uh, to speaking card, because I, don't, I wasn't sure I understood what, what uh, was written, uh, because um, I, I uh, was opposed to changing the front setback from 50 to 35 feet, and I believe that's what this says, but in addition, it's not noted here is that, to my recollection, is that planning and zoning made a motion and it passed seven to zero uh, to oppose this setback from 50 to 35 foot. So I'm just adding that as a comment. You can correct me. So she, she, so, uh, so what I'm just saying is that they also voted to oppose the front setback change. So uh, it was confusing. Uh, thank you, Peggy. Okay, that's all. Any further council discussion? Yeah. Let me, can I ask Peggy a question? Sure. Ms. Usaka, uh, what kind of industry would come into this area, potentially? Well, the zoning includes, uh, I just took a listing, it includes light manufacturing, uh, production and print shop, it includes laboratory, uh, freight distribution, bottling plants, screen printing, package delivery. Uh, it also includes boat building. Um, and that That's was like done as an fumes. that was done as an interpretation <laughs> by the um, uh, local by the planning no nope, board of adjustment. I just I'm, I'm sort of curious because I'm like. If you have 50 feet, that sort of tells me that maybe some of these industrial uses might not be safe or good for human consumption. Well, I mean, you I don't know if this will make you feel any better or not, but the heaviest industrial that we have is 
heavy industrial M2, and the front setback is 25 feet. That doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> no. I mean, you said, you said boat works, and I'm thinking yeah. I, w I would not want to be um, working anywhere near somebody fiberglassing. Well, staff doesn't disagree with you. That's why it was an appeal, and they overturned the staff's interpretation. Oh. <laughs> so 35 feet starting to sound a little bit better. Um, and that's why, if you look on page 362, I've explained all of the different zoning categories that we have. M3 is a highway industrial infill. It's a very uh, different zoning category. It's only uh, long US1 north of Buffalo Road and State Road 405 from 50 to Fox Lake. And you can see that its minimum lot size is an acre, where if you look at the other properties, the minimum lot sizes are much smaller. <clears throat> so if you, okay. have a, if you have a larger lot size, it's easier to accommodate those larger setbacks. So in the, the M3 kind of businesses would be acceptable in the PID? I think you could put some of those in PID. I don't have a list of everything that's allowed in both places. But um, as I said, the M3 is, is an odd, it's a highway industrial infill. And so it has a very limited use, actually. And it's, in, it's located in only certain areas, and it's got a larger lot size. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Just uh, I'll make a comment that it's, it's a light industrial area. Anything smokestack or anything is, is not allowed. And I'm not even sure if the, the boat plant, Hell's Bay, is that the one that's over there? Yeah. yeah. And they've been there for, I don't know, 25, 30 years. I'm not sick. <laughs> now, now, let's not have a discussion. <laughs> okay. I knew that was coming. <laughs> you you should never put yourself that. open. I apologize. Uh, it's been there uh, way back when, when I was uh, economic development director. I, I've never heard any complaints out of, out of anybody on, on the, the boat plant. It's not, it's a small flats boat. It's not a major, major type of boat. I've been a bit round enough fiberglass that I know I don't want to sit next to it. Well, you you know, know. nobody's asking you to sit <laughs> next to it. Or have okay. Robert sit next to it. Uh, <laughs> anything else, Member Nelson? No. Okay. Member Jordan? Yeah, just uh, to remind the council, you're talking about the, the setback, but remember, you have to double it. It's 35 feet on my side, and it's 35 right. feet on the So that's it's 70 feet. And what's around me now, I'm, I'm a logistics group. What next to me is electronics manufacturing group, repair group. On the next side of me is a, is, is a um, trucking company. And behind me is Hell's Bay. Okay. And, and there's no, no problem. I mean, they're, they're trying to use as much of their space as possible. Some of it, you know, they, they put a fence on it, but they got storage and everything right up to the, to the fence. And we're industrial area, so we expect that. We need to use as much space as we possibly can is, is the bottom line. So. Yeah. Right. Vice Mayor? Yes, sir. It's, uh, thank you, Mr. Jordan. Uh, Member Jordan, it's scary when you read my mind because I've sat here the whole time thinking, do I want to ask this question because it might come off silly. And that was, if I have 35 feet on my side and i got 35 feet on the other side, does that not double it? Yeah. And, and I, I kept thinking, you know, I'm looking at all these graphs and charts, and it looks like it would. Does. Which makes me feel better about the situation. So you have double on, if you've got 50, it's 100. Thank you. I'm going to, uh, I see no other lights. I'm going to close the uh, public hearing. I'll ask for a motion. I'm going to try this one um, because I'm really, I'm not sure how we can do this because I don't want to go with the P and Z. What I want to do is to uh, uh, go with approval of what, um, staff has recommended, which is not the, is actually, should I read each one of them, the side no, things? Can, or, uh, Peggy can. Can you, you understand? Yes, sir. 
help me. But do you want me to read that to make sure that right. we're all on the same wavelength here? Yes. Okay, I can do that. I think I can, yes. Okay, that would be uh, front setback of 35 feet, interior side yard setback of 15, side corner of 35, rear setback of 25, and 100 feet from a residentially utilized, zoned, or land use uh, property. That's my motion. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? What's taking y'all so long? That's what, what staff said, correct? Yes, right. what, what staff says. Yes. Yeah. Second. Uh, okay. I have a motion. I have a motion and a second uh, discussion. I will uh, just say that I, I think this has, as uh, I said it the last time, that somewhere in that park, uh, the, the founding papers, it's, it says it's a park-like atmosphere. Well, that didn't work. Right. It didn't work for many, many years. That's why the park was, uh, was not occupied, and we still have actually land now. Uh, because, and this was talked about at the, Parks and uh, I mean the uh, the, the uh, PNZ board, um, and they they said somebody made it. I made that motion. I think one person did that was me because I was over there and trying to bring people in. And one of the things, one of the things, I'm not saying it's the only thing uh, that kept many people from proceeding was the, the restrictions that were unusual for an industrial park. And uh, so it, it's just the fact. I can't, I didn't keep records of them or anything like that, but it, it did happen. And, and uh, we um, actually talked about redoing it at one point, but the fact that it said, uh, the council at the time, because it said uh, <coughs> park like atmosphere, but mm -hmm. it didn't work 50 years ago, it didn't work 30 years ago, and, and we're in a position now to have more industry coming in because of all the things that are going on and uh, diversify our economy more. So I'm, I'm very much in, in favor of this uh, and I've experienced it myself, so. All right, I will, uh, any other comments from anyone? If not, um, do we have, a, yeah, we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Mayor Johnson. Yes. My, excuse me, Vice Mayor Diesel? Yes. Member Stockel? Yes. Member Jordan? Yes. Member Nelson? Yes. Passes unanimously. Next item, please. Yes, sir. Now we'll move to 10 ordinances, first reading. First ordinance is ordinance number 20. 2019, an ordinance of the city of Titusville amending chapter 15 pensions and retirement, article two general employees pension plan of the code of ordinances of the city of Titusville, amending section 15113 reemployment after retirement, providing for in-service distribution of normal retirement benefits in accordance with the internal revenue code, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for severability of provisions and providing an effective date. This is the first reading of ordinance 20-2019. The uh, public hearing is scheduled for May 28, 2019 at the City Council meeting at 630. Um, there are <coughs> no decisions to be made, so um, we won't be accepting cards on this item. All right. Uh, city staff, is there any comments? I see nobody up there, so I guess not. Council, any questions? There is a card. Okay. Council, any questions on we this? We do have a card, sir, and the council recommends that you listen to the card. Clerk, uh, I'll open, I guess it's a public hearing. Um, call a card, please. Stan Johnston. Uh, Stan Johnston, 860 Points Ed Avenue. Uh, my comment is neither. I'm not opposed to her because the only thing I had a concern with is something that I'm not sure about what's going on because um, last time I, uh, I was in discussion about with, with retirement plans it had to do with the benefits 
and I don't think this has to do with anything that I'm concerned about. Well, I was just concerned about discussions we had back in January and February of 2018. We were talking about falling off of a cliff and bankruptcy of the of the city. So I don't think this has anything to do with that type of uh, decision. So I was going to have that for 10A and 10B. So I'll pass on 10B. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is first reading, so there is no vote. Next item, please. Next item is ordinance number 21, 2019, an ordinance of the city of Titusville amending chapter 15, pensions and retirement, article three, police officers and firefighters pension plan of the code of ordinances of the city of Titusville, amending section 15, 127, membership regarding participation by the police and fire chief, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for severability of provisions and providing an effective date. This is the first reading for Ordinance 21, 2019. The public hearing is scheduled to be conducted by the City Council at the May 28, 2019 City Council meeting beginning at 630. Uh, Council, have any questions of staff? I see none. Again, no vote. So, uh, oh, I guess, Clerk, is there a card on this? Yes, sir, there was. Mr. Johnston waived his uh, right to speak. Okay. No vote, so uh, no further action is needed. Next item, please. Next item is 10C, Ordinance Number 22, 2019, an ordinance of the City of Titusville, Florida, amending the Code of Ordinances relating to installation of required improvements prior to plat approval and required exhibits by amending Chapter 34 procedures, Division 5 plat and Division 6 improvements required agreements, section 34164 review procedures, 34173 required exhibits, 34181 required improvements, and 34182 improvements required to be installed, and by creating a new section 34165 building permits for model homes to establish permitting requirements for model homes prior to final plat approval, providing for severability, repeal of conflicting ordinances, effective date, exemptions, and incorporation into the code. This is the first reading of Ordinance 22-2019. The public hearing is scheduled to be conducted by City Council at the May 28, 2019 meeting at 6.30. The Planning and Zoning Commission will consider this ordinance at its meeting on May 22, 2019. Council, any questions? I see no lights. Uh, clerk, any cards on this item? There is no vote on this item, so no further action is required. Old business, there is none new business. Yes, sir, through the midpoint of the fiscal year 2019, most revenues continue to be tracking consistently with the budget. Currently, revenues from the state of Florida continue to trend lower than budget. All other significant revenues are tracking in accordance with the historical records. Staff is seeking approval of the following mid-year uh, budget amendments that's attached in your packet. The attached budget amendments for FY 2019 funding for the department request and adjust the 2019 budgeted working capital to the FY 2018 results. Staff has a presentation for you. Bridget and uh, Tom are available to answer any questions you have after the presentation. <laughs> well, I guess the first, I didn't know that. Um, the first slide's going to be um, just uh, re-articulate the mission and the vision of the city. And then um, the 2019 strategic goals and objectives that were approved during last year's um, budget workshops and budget hearings. And then this is just the um, city ordinance that um, directs us to provide you all this um, mid-year review. And then, um, in general, the city policy states that all the operating departments must manage to their bottom line. If they, for some reason, are expected to go over the bottom line, then we have to do a budget adjustment. So as we've gone through mid-year for us, that ends March 31st of 2019. Most of our revenues are on track to meet the annual budgeted estimates. Any of those that are not, we are proposing to make adjustments as part of this presentation. And um, the only fund that's got an issue with revenues is the loss fund, the insurance fund, but we've received some revenues this year, and we're going to be asking that you recognize those, and that'll bring it back into balance. 
And with regard to expenditures, all the departments are managing to their bottom line, and we don't see any issues going forward. And then here are the budget amendments we're proposing for mid-year. Um, if you all recall, when the auditors presented the CAFR um, at the end of March, we had talked about um, some of the big fund balances we had. And what we're doing here is we're actually adjusting the 19 budget to match the fund balances that happened at the end of um, fiscal year 2018. The big $1.5 million um, fund balance and general fund, that was not planned. And if you all recall, that's kind of a, a one-shot wonder. Um, we had It was the time in which we received some cash for the financing of vehicles. And so what we're proposing in subsequent budget amendments is um, to appropriate some of that to items we couldn't fund in the 19 budget. And the rest of these are just um, catching those fund balances up to how we actually ended the fiscal year. Um, and that's the internal service funds. Um, if, you, if you notice about halfway down this slide, where it says lost fund reserves, there is a deficit fund balance of $318,000. We thought we were going to have more money to open fiscal year 2019 than we did when we ended 18, but we have received unanticipated claims to replace that, which will be in the next set of slides. Um, in order to um, achieve some of the goals that we, we wanted to achieve in 19. Um, with some of the pickup we had at the end of 18, we are proposing the following adjustments to general fund. Um, some of the biggest, the bigger items are at the bottom. The transfer to general construction, that's to fund some um, facilities improvements. If you remember during the 19 budget bill, we did not fund anything. Um, so this is to get some of that caught up and then to do um, some diff additional work in roads and streets. And those projects will be um, detailed on the next page. Other than that, it was some other um, items that we needed to get caught up on within the city. Um, here are the projects for general construction that are all being funded from the general fund revenues, um, renovations to the city hall bathrooms, um, installing some security for human resources, um, and then some additional improvements to um, public safety. And then with roads and streets, um, we are adding a few projects, um, traffic signal locations. Those are some um, newer items that we haven't funded in a while. The rest of them have to do with roads. And then um, with regards to the water and sewer fund, there's some projects um, and some additional costs that have increased for the water department, and they've got sufficient working capital to fund those. And then um, this next slides are um, some of our um, smaller departments, but they've identified some needs and would like, the marina has some upgrades it would like to do. Um, and then um, our information technology department is looking to increase some security at the police department. Um, if you look at the very bottom where we should, the lost fund reserve, we've gotten in some um, insurance settlement reimbursements that were not budgeted. So we're gonna utilize that to replenish the shortfall. Um, that we um, began this fiscal year with. So in total, we're looking for about three and a half million of budget adjustments, but all of it's funded from revenues that we've received and have in hand as of this date. Well, remember, uh, 1.5 million of that is in the general fund. The rest is from your enterprise funds, mm -hmm. which is out of working capital. Yes. There's one change that we have to make to this um, for the marina. Uh, we've decided not to go with the software and the, the fender system. We determined that it would, wouldn't be beneficial. It wouldn't be uh, worth the cost. And the software is actually the responsibility of the vendor, um, not the city. It's proprietary software. So we'll be saving $40,000. You'll be saving twenty, right? You do. Yeah. Okay. So in summary, um, we're on track with our revenues and expenditures after we make these budget adjustments. We're able to um, do some additional enhancements to the facilities of the city and to the roads that we did not plan on in the 2019 budget. And um, as far as we can tell now, we're, all, we're on track to end in a good position at the end of FY19.
So just so you know, the methodology that we arrived on these, uh, we didn't want to do any reoccurring expenses because like um, Bridget said, this is a one-shot deal from 18 that was carried into 19 that we didn't anticipate. So what we did is we took a, that uh, $14 million uh, deficit list that we had accumulated and got staff together and prioritized which ones we needed to do. Um, in road and streets, we added Chaffee and White and then we were, we were we had to take a couple roads off initially to add those, so we're adding those back on. So we're actually going to exceed our uh, six miles of roads this year, which is good. Very good. And so, as you all know, we've already begun the 2020 budgeting process, and um, the strategic plan was approved tonight. So, as over the next few months, we'll be um, compiling the final list of the budgeted items and get that to you all in July. And then here are just the priorities that the city manager has articulated to staff with regard to the um, 2020 budget build. A lot of it's consistent in the, with the priorities of the past. This is the rest of them. We have added a five-year budget plan and uh, staff has worked very diligently to put that together. We're very happy with that. That allows us to forecast big expenditures like fire trucks, half a million dollars per expense. Um, it also helps us to forecast when we can bring personnel on, which will be a reoccurring expense. So we're addressing the shortfall of police and other uh, ones that we've been just kicking down the road because we said we couldn't afford them. So it gives us a, a better feel for the five-year budget. It took a lot of work to put that together, but I think it's working quite well, at least through the first round of our um, director meetings with with us uh, on the 2020 budget yep. and then here are the dates that have already been determined with regard to the 2020 budget july 9th it's when we plan to present the proposed budget to you all the 14th will be the budget workshop and then in the two dates in september's or when we in september is when we have our public um budget hearings scheduled and those cannot conflict and do not conflict with the county or the school board so I think we're good. Do you have any questions? Any questions from council? See none. You did a good job. We have one card on the item. All right, sir. Call the card, please. Stan Johnston. Mm -hmm. uh, Stan Johnston, 860 Point Avenue. I, uh, my concern is what I was talking about at this uh, last time I spoke just a few minutes ago, and that was the this uh, uh, report some time ago. January and February 2018, that the city was about to fall off a cliff. And then there was a 27 minute, uh, uh, after that there was 27 minutes when, as far as I know, nobody was here, but it's on YouTube, that the uh, mayor asked for a, uh, I think it's called Rule 13, to go back and uh, consider that. And the, and the word was used by council members, the word was the B word, bankruptcy. And that was discussed at length. So um, considering that, that this is what council has discussed in January, February, 2018, uh, perhaps uh, someone would like to comment about city's solvency, considering that it was hotly debated and questioned for uh, even without public comment for that 27 minute period. So uh, I'm asking you to consider that, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, we need to accept the, uh, I need a motion to accept. Move to accept the uh, fiscal year 2019 mid-year financial review and approve the proposed budget amendments of the fiscal year's quarter ending March 31st, 2019. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Uh, all those in favor say yes. Yes. Any opposed like sign passes unanimously. Next item. At the April 23rd, 2019 council approved a staff report regarding tree protection and mitigation regulations to, uh, to be presented at a future meeting regarding trees. Attached is a comparison of the city of Titusville and Brevard County tree regulations, as well as responses to questions raised by council members during the April 23rd meeting. A brief list of possible options to address land clearing and tree protection is also attached. 
Staff recommends that council conduct a workshop on this issue to obtain community and council input before moving forward to develop and advertise any amendments to the city's land development regulations. And Ms. Pisaka is available to answer any questions and we're seeking your guidance on advisability. Any comments from you on anything? Council, any questions? Uh, Member Jordan. I just think that's, that's a good idea. I, I really appreciate the presentation by those who came and talked about this and their flexibility because one thing we don't want is for us to put something in place that's going to uh, stutter our growth, but also we want to make sure we get greenery around it. And, but we need to hear from both sides to see where we are. So certainly look forward to that workshop. Uh, any other questions or we need to uh, approve an advisability to schedule a workshop? I'd move to approve the advisability to schedule a workshop. You, you have a card on this oh, side. We have a too, card. Of course. Oh, sorry. Call, I'm sorry, my fault. Uh, call the card, please. Stan Johnston. Uh, I just want to say I approve of this. Uh, I hope that you do. Uh, Schedule a workshop. It's a, it's a, it's an important issue. Thank you. I have a motion, please. Now I get to move to approve the advisability to schedule a workshop on land clearing and tree protection. Second. I have a motion and a second by the vice mayor. <laughs> Maybe I'm just here better at this year. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> now, now I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All, all those in favor say yes. yes. Any opposed, like sign, passes unanimously. Petitions and requests from the public present. Anybody that wishes to speak, come forward. I see no one. Uh, we have one. Oh, okay. Come on up. Come on, sir, come to the microphone, please. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Leland Chemries. I live at 1350 North Carpenter. I am not in the city of Titusville. But, you know, I live here. I shop here. I'm here every day. We understand. You know, my so dentist is downtown. You know, everything. You're welcome to come to the council meeting, sir. I thought that Titusville had laws on trimming trees, cutting trees, isn't there an ordinance or some ordinances controlling that? There, there are ordinances, sir. Sometimes ordinances uh, need to, need revision or improvement. Uh, I mean, sometimes they don't, but because uh, it's horrible. I, I, I some of the places that used to have trees that I drive by, like the, the church on North Garden. I mean, on North Carpenter, just off of Garden, they had a beautiful oak tree. I go to vote there on the north side of their a monstrous oak tree. For some reason, they decided to take it out, and they haven't put anything back. It just, you know, it, it hurts me. I think there's a difference between new construction, and I'm going to ask staff, if you will, Ms. Busaka, and somebody who owns property being prohibited to do something on their property after a certain period of time. There's an exemption for single-family residential after they have been there for a year. Um, but the, otherwise, people should come in and get a permit. And if it's required under the site plan that they're, it, to meet the landscaping requirements, then the only way that tree can be removed is if it's diseased or if it would cause some kind of problem you know, if it falls on the building or something like that, in which case they would then have to replace that or mitigate. So it, we can, um, I don't know the specifics about that particular issue, but, sir, I can talk to you in a, when we're done okay, here and I can I get more. I have a couple that really just tear my heart out when I well, drive by and see I'd be places. happy to, to sure. find out and get back to you and That's, explain yeah. what's going on. Sure. If and, you will, and if I can come to these other meetings. I, that you're, oh, yeah. I'll get you your know. email address and we'll make sure you're on the list. Thank you very much. But also give her the addresses yes, so that she can do the research. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. 
I didn't know the tree, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, we've been, uh, let's see, we had the mayor's report, right? City manager's report? So you haven't done your report yet. Sorry? Yeah. Haven't done mayor and council report yet. Oh, okay. Well, the mayor's report you have. Any council reports? I see a uh, vice, vice mayor. Wow. Oh, there they go. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of buttons out there. Yeah. <clears throat> just a couple things. Uh, I just want to, you know, kind of say it publicly because I'm hearing a lot of uh, concerns to me. Um, uh, City Manager, we have spoken. I appreciate your support on trying to do something with the uh, intersection of Highway 50 and Barna uh, concerning a left-hand turn there by CVS. So I'll simply say that we are doing something, and City Manager is working with the state, and I appreciate that. I'd also like to note, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I mentioned Titus Landing and the CRA discussion earlier. I'd like to at least note that I and uh, some business people that I've spoken with recently would at least like to consider uh, the naming of a road that runs parallel or something in that area uh, after Robin Fisher. Uh, I know that gets to be very complicated and sticky, um, and I'm just going to leave it at that, that there is some interest out there. And... Um, Certainly, uh, I'm sure you guys were all there uh, when he was uh, standing on the back of the trailer and talking about Miracle City Mall and, uh, you know, where it's at now. Uh, there are certainly uh, a few areas I'd like to see filled with some businesses that aren't yet, but, um, you know, took a, took a step and, and did a lot of work, and, and certainly the previous council can take an awful lot of credit for that. We, we, we got in kind of on the tail end of that, but I would say that uh, Mayor Johnson certainly had a lot to do with that. Um, yeah, and uh, Commissioner Pritchett, and I'm I'm going to miss people, so don't let me stop. But anyway, I just think that it's worthy of note. I'm not saying where it's going to go, how it's going to go, if it's going to go, but I just think that uh, it's something worthy of note. I rem I remember vividly standing there with the bricks all around us, and I got a couple of those bricks at my house now from the Miracle City. No. So. Uh, so anyway, I just want to say I appreciate all that was done there. Robin Fisher certainly is somebody who uh, appointed that. And, again, uh, the entire previous council uh, can go some direction there, too. So that's pretty much what I want to say. Uh, stop light at CVS and uh, Robin Fisher naming. Yes, sir, just to update you, uh, we did contact FDOT. We've been calling them weekly. Uh, their safety section has approved the uh, <coughs> installation of a turn lane at that intersection and a, a traffic arrow. Um, their operations section has not given us a date when they're going to complete the work. And they're also going to change the, currently they're hanging, they're going to put uh, bars out there so that it, they're going to do both together. And we stress the need for the safety of our citizens. If we could do maybe one and then come back and do the other, but so far we haven't gotten any response. Well, thank you so much. I can't say city government is slow with the state. That's awesome. <laughs> that is that is quick. I appreciate that. Yet. I really do. I drive that every day, and I can tell you there's times I'll be the second car in line, and I literally have to wait three lights to get through because of the traffic coming the other way. So uh, thank you so much, City Manager. Just to uh, control expectations now. Yeah, uh, okay, <laughs> I haven't done yet. When, when they haven't given us a date, we're, we're, we're working them. But, <laughs> yes, sir. Take it when you get it. The, uh, going back to the Robin Fisher, uh, Robin Fisher is an amazing man. Amazing. Uh, I, I did work with him on several projects uh, during that period, including the NBEDZ, but it was all Robin's ideas and uh, personality, I guess. He just, nobody says no. <laughs> it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I don't, I don't know what, the, where was this street you wanted to have? Well, I, I don't want to get too caught up in things, but and, and I, I will get with city manager further. Well, I, obviously, it's got to be one we have to be able to name, but I was thinking at least that part of Harrison that is right next to the mall. And it could be, oh, it's a state road or something that I don't know about, and we can't do that. If you want to discuss it with the city manager. So that would be good. Even, that would and, be and as you mentioned that previous, I, I'd be remiss probably if I didn't at least mention, as he would, his assistant, Holly Carver, through all that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we have uh, Member Stokel. Thank you. So I got a pretty lengthy email of a good summary of kind of what happened at the state level, of what bills went through and passed, what bills failed, um, so I can have potentially Virginia forward that to all of you guys if you are interested in reading that summary. Yes. Just some highlights that I was really proud of. Um, a lot of the restrictions they were trying to put on CRAs got removed 
before it passed, so I was very happy about that. Short-term rentals, which is one of our one of the, uh, the league, Space Coast League of Cities hot items, uh, it died. So there was a lot that happened. And then the big one that I was very, very happy about, I posted on Facebook, actually, um, the one that hit the governor's desk, and it was his first veto, um, not allowing local governments to potentially ban plastic straws if they yeah. want to. And it was worded very, very well. Um, so it gave me a lot of hope and excitement. And then we start this process again next month with starting to pick our priorities. So if you guys have any issues or hear of anything that you think maybe should be a priority for the league um, to address at the state level, um, just let me know and I'll be happy to bring it forward. But yes, I was very happy and I can um, send this, have Virginia send it to everybody. Now there are some changes with the CRA, but they're not as dramatic yes, as they were before. Correct. Yes, there, are, there definitely are, but... And one of the changes that we implemented this year because we anticipated it going to uh, be approved by the legislation is an independent audit every year of our finances, and we're already doing that. Yep. So... Yeah, it was it was very nice compromise. Great, and yep. thank you for doing what you yep. do. And, Mayor, I have a question for Member Stokel, if I could. Sure. Uh, the Space Coast League of City, that 2020 plan that was presented, did you all vote on that last night? The twenty the the elect uh, the alternative energy no so it did not it actually funny you mentioned that no so remember what I told you about that issue yes right. uh, so it, no the guy never showed back up again there was no discussion on it and uh, some of the other ones that I talked to they said they brought it up and their their local um, governments were not interested in it either so yes thank you okay uh, anybody uh, member Jordan yes sir um, actually I have two things in. They're pretty short. First thing, I, I'm not sure who owns the lights at 405 and Grissom. State. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. there, there's definitely a problem um, yeah. between 4 and 5 o'clock. You got a lot of traffic coming from the Space Center. You got a lot of traffic coming from the industrial area. It's about 35 cars can go east west, but it's only five cars before you get hit. Something needs to be done there because it, it really is a traffic jam. And, of course, people are dangerously, including myself, trying to go around, turn, and, and then come back. Um, and that's not a good thing to do for sure. So, yeah, Chief Lau and, and uh, Public Works Director have been working on this for quite some time. Um, the problem that they're having, and, and just so you know, it's not our boxes. That, so um, it's a smart system that tries to educate itself. It's a computer mm. system that educates itself on traffic flows. So when you have a big peak at times, it's not educating itself. So they're trying to figure out how they can go back to maybe an older system or something like that to solve the problem. But um, they know they have a problem, and they are working through the issue. And it, it is bad. I it's agree with really you. It's really bad, yeah. I can never be in a hurry to go home. <laughs> I go there for You're always in a hurry. You just can't <laughs> I just there, can't man. get there, yeah, that's for sure. Uh, and the second one is, is I think you all know me um, by now. I, I'm a pretty sentimental person, and I just love people for sure. And one of the things I, I can tell you um, that I, I'm really um, in love with is the way this council works. Uh, we all have, I believe, we have really good character. Um, we are very focused on what we can do for our citizens. Uh, we're not selfish. We have a sense of humor, uh, and we get the job done. And we're not embroiled in any kind of messy stuff. And so <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> going to jail? <laughs> yeah, go, well, I'm not even going to go there. But I, I, I really appreciate um, the character of, of each and every one of you. And I, I certainly, I was actually touched by the mayor uh, at the um, prep. Uh, meeting. I shouldn't say prayer meeting. It was a prayer. What was that? The <laughs> prayer. Close enough. The National prayer. Day of Prayer. The yeah. National Day of yeah. Prayer. On the steps of the city hall. Yeah, yeah. at city hall. But but the mayor actually um, he 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 said something about this council, and it really touched me. He basically said that um, he uh, really feels that we all get along and we do. Uh, you know, we're trying to do the right thing. It's one of the best councils that he's ever been uh, experienced with, and. and and whether you know it or not, uh, Mr. Mayor, that, that really touched me uh, that you said that. And I really appreciate you said that. And I think people, everybody around was very touched that, you know, they've got a good counsel for sure. And, and I think we really do. Well, I sure. meant that very, very much. And uh, I am just very proud of this council and I, the way we act, as you, as you said. And I, I took that moment uh, 
to to talk about it out there because it was part of it had to do with uh, bringing the world together and how politics um, often is uh, lately pulling the world apart. And I wanted to make the point that wasn't here. And yeah. we're very proud of, of, of what we do here. I felt you, sir. I really did. Thank you. I appreciate that, too. OK. <laughs> Give her something to eat, would you please? Um, City Manager's report. Yes, sir, I have no action uh, items for you to vote on. Um, I do have a couple information items I'd like to highlight. Uh, first is our staff semi-annual report, which hopefully uh, council had a chance to review. You saw all the activities that we've got going on. And then uh, also we have a chance to um, uh, refund some of our, or refinance some of our bonding, which could save us uh, annually about $170,000 or $800,000 over the life of the bond. So we're proceeding with that. Uh, that's a great catch, and we're glad we're doing it. And I'd like to brag a little bit about the mayor. Um, we give quarterly reports periodically to groups that have asked for it. Um, this past Tuesday at Temple Baptist Church, we uh, spoke at a group called the Prime Timers. Uh, the Prime Timers uh, consist of 150 people uh, that are not young people. And uh, during the That's why I got along with them. <laughs> during the um, snowbird season, that number goes up to about 250 people. That's every Tuesday. They meet at 10:30, and um, I think Mayor, we got out of there about one o'clock or so. Mm -hmm. uh, the format of their meeting is a social period. They um, have a couple guest speakers came in. Uh, we were one of those speakers. Uh, we presented the uh, Tysville Talking Points and Update for the city. Had some really engaged questions from mm -hmm. the group, which we're, we uh, committed to go back there every quarter to update them because uh, it was such a good group. Uh, they sang some songs. They uh, had a meal, uh, had a couple prayers, and then concluded. But it was very encouraging that we have things like that in our city um, that, that are taking care of the youth and also taking care of those that are um, elderly. So I was really, really happy to see that. And it did my heart good to see that as well. So, Mayor, I'm bragging on you. I think you did a great job. There. I, I, I want to turn that around because uh, it was a, a dual effort, and it, it was uh, it would have been pretty interesting <laughs> for me if I had to do it alone. I don't think I could have done it. But the way we split it up and it seemed to work uh, very well for us was uh, they were interested in, uh, it, when they asked us to go, it was to tell about what's going forward. But I went back in, in history and told them how we got to here and then went forward. And they really, really liked that. Yeah. And I was here for most of it. I'll say some, not at least a lot of it. Because yeah. somebody said he's been here a long, long, long time. I said, leave the last long off, will you please? <laughs> but uh, and the, the items uh, uh, that I couldn't possibly have, have kept in, uh, in, in order of all the things that's going on presently, uh, the city manager uh, took that part of it, and it just it just went really well, and I was very ha happy with uh, what was done, and and so were the people there. They really, they all came up and, and pat us on the back and things. It was very nice, very nice, and thank you for saying that, and I, I equally say that for you, sir. Uh, okay. There is a card on the city manager's report. However, there are no action items for you to consider. Uh, we don't have cards when there's no action item, sorry. Actually, I'm not. Uh, okay. City Attorney's report. No report. No report. Unless somebody has something else they'd like to talk about, I declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs>